Murder Incorporated was a criminal organization that operated in the United States during the early to mid 20th century. The group was responsible for carrying out numerous contracts killing on behalf of the National Crime Syndicate, and its members became infamous for their ruthless efficiency and brutality. While the group has been disbanded, the legacy of Murder Incorporated lives on in popular culture and in the historical record. Carl Sathakis writes, Syndicate founders sagely figured there would be opposition to their plans, and hence the need for an enforcement arm to back up the National Board's decisions. One of the most authoritative accounts of Murder, Inc. was written by Burton Turkus, a prosecutor who played a key role in bringing down the group. In his book written in 1950, Murder, Inc., The Story of the Syndicate, Turkus provides a detailed account of the organization's origins, operations, and ultimate downfall. According to Turkus, Murder Incorporated began as a loose network of Jewish gangsters in New York City in the 1920s and was also known as the Boys from Brownsville. These gangsters initially specialized in a variety of criminal activities, including extortion, gambling, and drug trafficking. However, as the group grew in size and influence, its members began to focus more heavily on contract killings. The group's leadership was comprised of several key figures, including Louis Lepke Bacalter, Albert Anastasia, and Jacob Garage Shapiro. These men were known for their organizational skills and their ability to carry out hits with ruthless efficiency. They recruited a network of loyal foot soldiers who were willing to do whatever it took to eliminate their targets, no matter how high profile or well protected they might be. Some of the notable killers were Louis Lepke Bacalter. Benjamin Bugsy Siegel, Jacob Garaz Shapiro, Albert Anastasia, Frank Abadondo, Louis Capone, Frankie Carbo, Abe Kidtwist Rillis, and Pittsburgh Phil Harry Strauss. By the way, there is a whole episode featuring Harry Strauss on this channel. He was also known as Pittsburgh Phil. The brilliance or depravity of the ensemble was that the killers usually had no connection to the victim, or most of the time even the town. If somebody in Jersey City needed to be whacked, they would call an affiliate in Chicago. That way, there would seem to be no motive. One of the most notorious killings carried out by Murder Incorporated was the murder of Dutch Schultz, a syndicate member. He was a powerful bootlegger and gangster who would become a thorn in the side of the flesh of the combination. In 1935, on orders from Anastasia, a team of hitmen gunned down Schultz in a Newark restaurant, putting an end to his plan to knock off prosecutor Thomas E. Dewey. Another infamous hit carried out by Murder Incorporated was the murder of Irving Penn a garment industry executive who had refused to pay protection money. Penn was shot to death in his office in 1932, sending shockwaves throughout the city. But probably Murder Incorporated's most famous murder was that of Walter Sage. What made this murder so special was the body was found and the killers didn't want the body found. They had tied it to a pinball machine and threw it in a lake. Citing J. Robert Nash, the body filled with intestinal gases and worked free of the pinball machine, floating to the surface. A kid twist relis opined, think of that, with this bum you gotta be a doctor or he floats. While Murder Incorporated was incredibly successful in carrying out hits for the syndicate, their success ultimately proved to be their downfall. In the late 1930s, federal authorities began to crack down on organized crime, and a special task force was created to investigate the activities of Murder Incorporated. 
Burton Turkus was appointed as a lead prosecutor in the case, and he was able to secure a number of key convictions against the group's leaders and members. J. Robert Nash notes that while Murder Incorporated was certainly not the first organization to carry out contract killings in the United States, they were by far the most successful and well organized. The group's ability to carry out hits with surgical precision made them a valuable asset to the syndicate, and they were able to operate with relative impunity for years. As already noted, Nash writes that the group's success ultimately led to its demise. The sheer number of murders drew the attention of law enforcement and federal authorities who were eventually able to build a case against them. Additionally, the rise of the FBI and other law enforcement agencies made it more difficult for organized crime groups like Murder Incorporated to operate with impunity. The World Encyclopedia of Organized Crime edited by J. Robert Nash and published in 1993, provides further insight into the history of Murder Incorporated. This massive volume features contributions from dozens of experts on organized crime from around the world and offers a more global perspective on the activities of the group. One interesting aspect of Murder Incorporated highlighted in this encyclopedia is their use of female assassins. While the group was predominantly made up of male gangsters, they did employ several women who were skilled at carrying out hits. One of the most notable female members of the group was Edie the Bug Millie, who was known for her ability to get close, very close, to her targets before killing them. The encyclopedia also notes that Murder Incorporated was not only active in New York City, but had branches operating in other major cities throughout the United States, including Chicago and Detroit. According to the Mob Museum, one of their assassins, Abe Kidtwist Relis, at the request of mob boss Louis Lepke Bacalter and Albert Anastasia, killed at least 11 people and perhaps up to 30. But alas, their downfall began, and Abe Kid Twist Relis was only too happy to contribute to their demise. Later, Relis turned Canary and started singing. In fact, he became known as the Canary of Murder Incorporated. Relis's testimony sent many Murder Incorporated personalities to the electric chair, including Pittsburgh Phil, Louis Capone, Mindy Weiss, Bugsy Goldstein, Happy Mayoni, Dasher Abadondo, Jacob Gura Shapiro, and most notably, Louis Lepke Bacalter. The date was November 12, 1941. Relis was guarded at the Half Moon Hotel in Coney Island by police, but eventually jumped out of his window or his throne. Either way, the canary was unable to fly. Despite the fact that Murder Incorporated operated decades ago, its legacy can still be felt in popular culture today. The group has been the subject of countless books, movies, and TV shows, and their ruthless efficiency and brutality continue to fascinate audiences around the world. While the activities of Murder Incorporated were undeniably heinous, they remain a significant part of American criminal history. A few years after Abe Relis' death, Murder Incorporated was an ugly distant memory, and many were glad to see it go.